Hi guys, welcome back to the Drive Life channel. In today's video, we've got another EV. Um, it is this BMW i3 here. So we've been talking about this car and actually the interesting thing about high mileage EVs. Um, so this car has actually got 82,000 and a half 82,500 miles um, when I said it correctly um, and what I want to talk about in this video is sort of what it's like to own a high mileage EV and now that these cars are becoming cheaper um, and obviously they're getting older and having more miles on them whether they're a good buy um, what are the sort of risk involved obviously we know what it's like with um, petrol and diesel cars from the last two videos but um, I thought it'd be interesting to see what it's like with an EV so I'm here with the EV King himself Chris Bound, um, owner of the full EV. So he's got, he's the, in the last video uh, with the E2008, um, he's the owner of that car and he owns a company that essentially does all EV charging stuff that you could ever want really. So um, I'll stick his information in the description below. But um, yeah, he's gonna to talk to us about what it's like to own a high mileage EV car, what, it's, what you need to look out for, if anything really. So um, okay, take it so away. This car's just over three years old. And as you heard, it's done 82,500 miles. I bought it ex lease, so it's been in a corporate ownership for three years or so. Uh, this is the i3 with the range extender option. Um, so, despite its mileage, what you find is it pretty much looks like uh, new inside. Uh, it's worn its miles really, really well. Um, the other important thing is that, unlike a petrol or diesel engine car, there isn't so much stuff to wear out. and. Um, the big deal for a lot of people considering electric cars is they worry about the batteries, how long will the batteries last? Well, the good news is the batteries last pretty much the life of, of the car. It's now been, been proven in practice. Uh, and this one is still showing uh, 135 miles of range when you charge it up fully on electric, uh, which is pretty much where it should be. Um, and electric cars actually do better if they're regularly used. So a high mileage car is probably going to have a better condition battery than a low mileage car of the same age. Excellent. So, how long have you had this car? You haven't had it long, actually. Have I've you? had this long. I got this as a stop gap to wait, uh, keep me, keep me on the move until my new leased car arrived. And um, new Peugeot. Yeah, this, this, uh, but, but, so I never had one of these. It's nice. It's a nice car to have. It's really, really been enjoyable to have. And although I will be getting rid of it, it will be with some degree of regret because it's quite a nice car to drive around in, and uh, it's a really neat little tool. Excellent. Right. So yeah, we'll we'll have a look around this one as well because I have I've featured one of these on the channel before, but I've never featured a range extender one. So um, essentially, what that means is it's got a little three-cylinder petrol engine that then produces electricity for the car to run even further. So it's just well, like it says in the title, it's a range extender, isn't it? Yeah. So these were produced as an option on the first and the second generation of the i3s. Right now, if you try and buy a brand new i3, they only make them with batteries in. They don't make the range extender anymore because they don't really feel it's necessary. So uh, the first generation uh, car had quite a small battery pack, so therefore small uh, range, and the range extender was a kind of good option for getting it further. They kept it in as an option on the second generation where they made the batteries larger, they made the capacity larger in the battery, uh, and the third edition has a larger capacity of battery again. So the range is actually now getting to the point where there's no need to have, to have the range the extender of the range extender. Yeah. So this is a sweet spot, it's in the middle, it'll do about 135 miles on electric only and then it's got potential for another 100 miles using the range extender if you're in a position where you haven't got time or are finding it difficult to get the batteries charged. Get hold of a charger. Yeah. Excellent. So yeah, we'll have a look inside. Oh, show us. The, there's the interesting thing about the two ports here, um, because actually, that you'd think would be the electric. We've got a dog over there. He's a bit unhappy. Um, that you'd think would be the electric, but it's not. It's actually the petrol. Um, yeah. And then where the petrol is that you'd expect to be a petrol is actually the electric. So you don't want to be mixing electric and petrol, do you? <laughs> well, I think you'd struggle. <laughs> you'd, you would struggle, yeah, I suppose so. So, so this car can take uh, home charging using a Type 2 charger at up to 7 kilowatts. And also, if you want to charge it up on, a, on the road, it can take rapid charging up to 50 kilowatts, which means you can fill it at a motorway service area in about 40 minutes. Um, so they're actually two different plugs that look like one, but they're actually two, yeah. if it makes sense. <laughs> so that, that is a Type 2 plug there, plug socket, and that is a CCS socket for, oh, okay. for DC rapid charging. Oh, uh, wow, okay. 
Yeah. So it's sort of a two in one type thing. Yeah, yeah. And then this, this bit lights up, doesn't it, here? Yep, that lights up. You've got your little, uh, your little legend there to tell up. you what it all means. To let you know it's charging correctly and the, the juice is flowing into it. Oh, cool, cool. And then down here, this, this little petrol tank, this takes all of two gallons, <laughs> which should be enough to extend your range by about 100 miles. It's about Once, nine litres, isn't it? Yeah, so the little, the little engine up the back just, just pipes up very quietly and, and just gets going and, and recharges the batteries while you're driving along. So it's not connected to the wheels at all. It's purely generating electricity to replenish the battery. Oh, wicked. Is there any way of seeing the engine or is it all tucked away? No, it's all tucked BMW away. BMW A style. It's all tucked away. Excellent. Uh, you might be able to see... Is there? If you poke underneath, you might be able to see an exhaust pipe. Can we, can we see a cheeky exhaust? Ah, yeah, over there, just on the corner. But yeah, otherwise, otherwise, in here you would in never here you've know, got a would nice you? Flat boot floor and nothing to see under there. There it is under there. So obviously, if it didn't have the range extender, you get a slightly, ever so slightly bigger boot, wouldn't you? I think you possibly would get a but, little bit of a deeper boot. Yeah, it's a bit, bit like in the GTE, how the battery reduces the boot capacity of the Golf ever so slightly, but. Um, Really, that's that's easier to load stuff into, isn't it? It's all, yeah. You don't really need the extra, what is it, five to ten centimetres. So, what sort of things should people look out for if they're buying a high mileage EV? Is there anything in particular that they need to look out for? Uh, well, on some of the uh, um, earlier models of uh, Nissan Leaf, for example, the Nissan Leaf does not have active cooling of its batteries, and they are more prone to degradation. Um, so. High mileage Nissan Leafs, you will see some reduction in the range uh, compared to when they were new. Uh, you may also see some small amount of degradation on vehicles such as the Renault Zoe as well. But uh, vehicles that have a more actively managed cooling system to keep the batteries in good shape. Like these. It's all the, uh, the they, higher end last, ones. They're going to last the life of the, back, life of the vehicle. And just like on a petrol or diesel car, you'll see the power output reduce as the engine gets older. So on a, on a battery car, you should expect some modest reduction in the capacity of the battery um, right. over time. But as I say, this one, pretty much like new, still showing 135 miles range when, you, when you charge it up fully. So you, you, you're going to get at least 100,000 miles out of one on you in terms Absolutely. of life? And I mean, uh, many of the manufacturers now give six year warranties on right. the batteries. So this one's still got a 60 warranty? So this, this still has a manufacturer's warranty on it, I believe. This is just over three years old. Oh, so excellent. So it's got another three years warranty. It's still, covered, it's still covered up to uh, either a mileage limit or an age limit. And oh, excellent. So it's still it's still effectively under under the guarantee. Under warranty, so you don't have to worry about any of anything going wrong. It's all fixed, isn't it? Which is actually probably more warranty than you get on most combustion engine cars, isn't it? So, yeah. And one of the things about the i3 that's always worth, here's, here's one of its party pieces, <laughs> uh, which is the suicide doors and the open space here. Um, but if you're looking at i3s, a bit like uh, other BMW products such as Minis, it's almost like no two are exactly the same. They've got lots and lots of different options. This one was really highly optioned and is probably uh, had pretty much all the boxes ticked uh, on the options list when it was, when it was ordered. It's got full leather seats. I like the open forward, that's nice. And then you've got it's the extended got the larger, the larger screen, it's got voice activated uh, phone calls, or you can actually write on the little touchpad there uh, the first couple of letters of, of the name of the person you're looking for. Uh, the BMW iDrive system is all in there as well. Uh, and so this is, this is quite an impressive piece of kit. It's got a re full reversing camera as well. Uh, extensive air con, all the toys. Yeah, and it's that's actually made out of recycled plastic, isn't it? That's recycled plastic, and then that's uh, recycled plastic and carbon fibre. Carbon fibre, yeah. That's a carbon fibre shell, which is why you don't have to have the column in the middle because they're it's so such stiff. A strong, strong shell. One thing I did notice when we did our review on, previously on the channel, um, I had my girlfriend in the passenger seat, and I tried to open the rear door. Well, she had the seatbelt on and nearly garroted her. So yeah. <laughs> she wasn't very happy about that. So that's something to bear in mind. But other than that, it's really cool. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. This car's actually for sale, isn't it, Chris? Yeah, it's going up uh, shortly for sale online. Um, 
it will be up for just under sixteen thousand pounds. Which is very cheap for one of these, isn't it? it in is. that spec it's with a range value. extender and everything like that. Yeah. And uh, if people are considering an electric car for the first time, then having the comfort of a range extender is probably an ideal first step because if you are worried in any way about the whole business of electric charging, then it gives you that comfort that you can still crack on even if you haven't worked out somewhere to pull up and uh, recharge the car. So it's essentially like, like a bit like the Golf GTE where it's a hybrid, but more of an electric hybrid if that makes sense yeah it's, like it's, you... it's absolutely an, it's a hybrid but it's absolutely an electric first hybrid and once you've driven around on electric you won't want to go back i can assure you that <laughs> okay then yeah so that's that's it guys that's something to bear in mind when you're buying um electric cars and actually high mileage electric cars are just as good as sort of their new counterparts um yeah. especially with the warranties and everything now that are being offered um it really isn't sort of a scary prospect like the media likes to paint it to be is it really Absolutely. so um yeah thanks for watching guys don't forget to like comment subscribe if you're interested in purchasing this car i'll stick the information in the link down below as well as chris's information with his company the full ev um, and they do all sorts of stuff like um, all the solutions charging ports everything like that what yep. else do you do uh solar to charge your car all those sort of systems so they can integrate it into your home so it, it just sort of becomes part of your life uh, which is as easy as possible essentially you can charge your car for free with the solar panels and everything like that so um yeah if you're interested in that sort of thing give him uh, contact him i'll stick his details in the description below so uh, yeah thanks for us um for having us around having us letting us look at the e2008 as well as this i3 and educating us slightly on <laughs> what it's like to be an ev owner and yeah thanks for watching guys um i'll see you in the next video cheers